Where my birds at? Kaka! Where my birds at? Kaka! Where my birds at? Uh, I'm, I'm right here, Mike. Where my birds at? Fine. Welcome to That's Good Sports. I'm Brandon Perna, and the NFL Draft has concluded. The great people of Texas lost their voices after booing Roger Goodell for two straight days. Never have I felt so deeply connected to Dallas. Today, I'll highlight a few more things from the draft, but mostly I'm going to focus on the Broncos selections. I do have to give Rich Eisen props for drawing attention to the NFL's biggest minority. And then there's another white brother that's there's available. Wrong. Yes. White brothers. Equality for all. That's good sports. And then there's another white brother that's there's available. Wrong. Yes. To quickly recap, to satiate your draft needs, these were the Broncos picks in order. First, Bradley Chubb, pass rushing sensation from North Carolina State. Second, Cortland Sutton, the one hand catching wide receiver monster from SMU. Third, Royce Freeman, the big running back from Oregon. Fourth, Isaac Yidem, the six foot one corner from Boston College. Fifth, Josie Jewell, tackling machine linebacker from Iowa. Sixth, Deshaun Hamilton, a great route running receiver from Penn State. Seventh, Troy Fumagalli, tight end, Wisconsin. Eighth, Sam Jones, offensive guard, Arizona State. Ninth, Keyshawn Beria, linebacker, Washington. And finally, running back, David Williams, Arkansas. Now that's the full haul, but going back to the beginning to review these guys, uh, on day two, legendary safety Steve Atwater was at the podium to announce the Broncos' first pick in the second round, and Mike Kliss leaked the pick on Twitter before Atwater had the chance to announce it live. Now I get reporters are supposed to get info and deliver that to us, but Atwater is an employee of the Denver Broncos. Mike Kliss is a secret employee of the Denver Broncos. Atwater was only announcing one pick and you couldn't give him the courtesy of being able to present that to us first? No wonder he's not in the Hall of Fame yet. He can't even trust his own teammates to do the right thing. Okay, starting with Bradley Chubb, the fifth overall pick. That's old news, I know, and I already talked about him in my day one draft recap video, so you can watch that. But again, this was a perfect pick, and every expert agrees. Terrell Davis calls him an impossible bust. Charlie Casserly says, with the addition of Keenum and now Chubb, Denver is in a better position for a Super Bowl run than they were in 2015. Honestly, though, all of that positivity makes me very nervous. It's like they're going to jinx the pick by saying all that shit. So I'm gonna unjinx it by saying it was bad. It was bad. It was bad. I think we're okay now. Broncos country, make some noise! You're gonna yes. love this pick! Now, with the first pick in round two, I thought the Broncos might try to go after the tackle, Connor Williams, or the corner, Josh Jackson, but they selected wide receiver Cortland Sutton from SMU, which is a much better college than SMH. One thing you should know about Sutton is, when he was asked about how he likes to give uh, fives on the field, this was his response. Tell it down. Oh, there we go. Down. You hear that, current Broncos players? No high fives. Hands down. Lows only. Now, receiver is a position of need for the Broncos. Uh, DT and Sanders are aging, and the Broncos really need a third wide receiver to emerge. And Sutton could be that guy. Elway said they had a first round grade on him, and uh, really, what's impressive about uh, Sutton are his hands. They are so good that he catches fish with his bare man hands. And the fish kind of, like I was pulling up the hill and the fish got off the hook and it started flopping back into the water. And I kind of just reached in there blindly Grabbed it out the water, threw it back on shore. You should be excited about this six foot four wide receiver. He's taller than Demarius Thomas. He catches anything thrown his way. Trust me, this guy is going to emerge as Case Keenum's best friend because Keenum will throw up jump balls to receivers he trusts. Sutton is like Odell Beckham Jr. Minus the desire to marry uh, inanimate objects and inhale lines of cocaine in hotel rooms. Sutton does his cocaine in the privacy of a bathroom like an intelligent person. Now into the third round with the 71st pick, Denver filled the big hole left by CJ Anderson in drafting running back Royce Freeman from Oregon. His nickname is Rolls Royce, which if you've watched the Netflix documentary Wild Wild Country, this should concern you. 
a Rolls Royce from Oregon. I think Freeman may actually be the, the Bob One. Thank you, Woody Roseland. Now this is why you should be excited about Freeman. One, the Broncos only had two running backs on the roster. This was a huge position uh, need uh, in this draft. He's a big bruising back, which the Broncos haven't had for a long time. He averaged 5.9 yards per carry in his career at Oregon and had 60 rushing touchdowns there. Between him and Henderson, Denver will have the cliche one-two punch and with Booker really have the ability to do anything from the running back position. I'm excited to see how a guy like Freeman improves the Broncos short yardage play, an area they have struggled with over the last couple years. Now the Kansas City Chiefs drafted linebacker Breland Speaks at uh, number 46. I don't know how I missed this name for my best names episode, but Breland Speaks Sounds like a touching lifetime movie that my mom would love. Breland Speaks, the inspirational story of a shy upper middle class suburban high schooler's debut into Def Jam poetry. Mike Mayock, like the Broncos' final pick in the third round, uh, Isaac Yidem. I'm glad they took a tall corner. At six foot one, he can provide some of the size Denver had with Aqib Tlaib in the secondary. Uh, he's built like Tlaib, he kind of hits like TJ Ward, and he makes love like Chris Harris. The scouting trifecta, if you will. He will need some time to develop. He's raw, has potential, but needs technique work as a coverage corner. Now, in the fourth round, day three, today, the Broncos got great value with pick number 106 when they took Iowa linebacker Josie Jewell, the crown jewel of this draft. The Josie to the Pussycats, a tackling machine who wears number 43 just like TJ Ward. He's got the face of Julian Edelman and the beard of Carson Wentz, or a leprechaun. Pro Football Focus had him graded as the 75th bit best player in this draft. He allowed zero touchdowns in coverage last year with 55 passes thrown his way. He will push Todd Davis for playing time from day one, but between Davis, Marshall, and Jewel, I really like the depth at the linebacker position now for the Broncos. Denver had two picks in the fourth round, and again, they added depth at the wide receiver position, selecting Deshaun Hamilton. And again, this is a great value selection as Pro Football Focus had Hamilton uh, rated as the 76th best player in the draft right after Jewel. Maybe Elway is just using Pro Football Focus as his draft guide. I know I would. Because of his size at six foot one and evaluation as possibly the best route runner in this draft, he could emerge as that perfect third slash slot receiver for the Broncos. Uh, he also had the highest deep catch rate in all of college football in 2017. So trust me when I say the passing game in 2018 will be a lot more fun to watch uh, in Denver. Between Hamilton, Sutton, DT Sanders, Taylor, Butt, and maybe Henderson, the Broncos have a very good chance to have one of the best ball catching groups in the league. Maybe. Hamilton. Unless there's an Aaron Burr in the AFC West, may be one of the best picks for the Broncos in this draft. Ross Tucker loves it, and I love Ross Tucker. Now I know many of you are worried about the offensive line, as I am, but here's the difference this next season. Case Keenum was one of the best quarterbacks under pressure last year. Keenum is better than every QB who started for Denver last season, and he will make plays even if, or especially when, protection breaks down. And if you get better play from him, it's gonna make the line look better is my thinking. In the fifth round, after trading with the Seahawks to get a seventh rounder, the Broncos drafted Wisconsin tight end Troy Fumagalli. You might recognize him as the spray paint dick artist from American Vandal. Fumagalli will have to shine as a blocking tight end, in my opinion, in order to make this roster for the Broncos. They do have Jake Butt, Austin Trailer, and Jeff Hireman ahead of him, and he will have to outplay all of those guys to earn a spot. He's got great size and great hands. His athleticism is what people question, but he might just fit in where Jeff Hireman hasn't. In the sixth round, after trading again, this time with the Rams, for two sixth round selections, they finally addressed the offensive line and selected Colorado Dothraki native Sam Jones. Jones has been labeled as a good fit in zone blocking schemes only, which is not a fit with the Broncos, who currently deploy a no blocking scheme. 
Jones is a guard and will compete with Connor McGovern and Max Garcia to be a starter, and honestly is the one player on the Broncos roster now that is most like me. I lived with my parents when I moved back to Colorado, just as Jones admitted he may be doing. And look at me now, Jones! With pick number 217, Keyshawn Biria from Washington, and then another linebacker was selected. I think he will be an instant special teams contributor for the Broncos, which with the departure of Cody Latimer and Corey Nelson will be very important for Denver. He had five fumble recoveries and a couple forced fumbles, but most importantly confirmed my suspicions of Elway's secret offseason strategy. Bring in guys who wore number seven. Beria, Keenum, and King to form the triple sevens, which I think means jackpot, motherfuckers! And with their final pick, the Broncos took David Williams, another big running back, six foot one, out of Arkansas. I don't know much about uh, this player, except that he, like Royce Freeman, adds some needed size to the running back position. He averaged 5.6 yards per carry in 2017 and doesn't have a lot of mileage on his legs as he split reps throughout his career at Arkansas. Now it's time for my obligatory draft grade. Overall, I give the Broncos an A for absolutely crushing the fifth overall pick, a B for barely addressing the offensive line, a C for only getting one chub, a D for drafting, and an F for fucking up my Saturday afternoon by not ending their draft selections in the fifth round. Nobody wants to watch all seven rounds of the draft. The only sick people who enjoy the end of the draft are the same sick people who enjoy the ending of Old Yeller when they blow out that dog's brains. And finally, I'll leave you with everyone taunting the Dallas Cowboy fans at the draft. What's up, Dallas? The San Francisco 49ers, the first NFL franchise to win five Super Bowl championships. Tonight! Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Sports here on YouTube. Draft coverage. Please subscribe to this channel. If you like the video, then click the like button. Share this shit on social media. If you don't do that, I will wither away and die. Let's hope this was the best Broncos draft of all in times forever.